So Priest might be the class that gets hit the hardest by rotation. Um, other than maybe Druid, maybe Druid gets hit a little bit harder. But Priest is losing Shadow Visions, which really affects the playability of things like the Divine Spirit Interfire. It's losing Spellstone, Eternal Servitude, Psychic Scream, which is probably the strongest board clear in the game. Uh, it, it just loses a lot. I don't think there's a single Priest deck that directly survives the rotation. So if it's going to be playable, the class probably needs to get some pretty good cards. And first up is, I guess, a pretty powerful card, Unsleeping Soul. So obviously, you want to play this in like a Silence Priest deck. As far as targets go, you're looking at like um, Ancient Watcher, uh, Quartz Elemental, I guess. I think Quartz Elemental is probably too, too expensive. There's also like Witchwood Grizzly. I believe if you silence the Witchwood Grizzly, it goes back up to 12 health. Again, that's kind of expensive for this guy, but hey, you get two 312s out of this card. That could be pretty good. Um, we are losing Humongous Razor Leaf to the rotation, which in the past has been the best silence target. But there's additional silence support in this set beyond Unsleeping Soul, including Arcane Watcher, which might actually even be better than Humongous Razor Leaf. It's a 5-6 instead of a 4-8. I think the 4-8 is probably slightly better, but a uh, 5-6 is good too. And this comes on curve right after the Arcane Watcher. So uh, on turn four, you get two five sixes, two pit fighters on turn four. That's pretty good. And uh, there's also the new neutral silence guy, uh, Dollar on Librarian, just for some more silence redundancy. So it looks like Silence Priest is getting some pretty strong support cards in this set. And this Unsleeping Soul card is very good at what it does. Silencing a single minion, um, it gives you another big thing in play. But my my problem with this is I don't actually know how Silence Priest wins the game anymore. In the past, if I remember correctly, it's been a while since uh, Purify rotated at the beginning of last year. But if I remember correctly, that was mostly a Divine Spirit Inner Fire deck, right? And without Shadow Visions, I think Divine Spirit Inner Fire is a much less reliable win condition. So I'm not sure how this deck actually wins, even if Unsleeping Soul is a very powerful card for the deck. So if Silence Priest is a thing, this is like a 5-star card, but basically I don't think Silence Priest is going to be a thing. Hinge Clan Shade Quill. Wow, that's a 4-mana four 4-7. Four I mean, sure it's got a drawback, but you're Priest, why do you care about your opponent having 5 health? This is a Yeti with 2 extra health. That just seems really good to me. Um, there's some talk about playing it in Silence Priest. I think that was like on the reveal stream. This card is in that deck. But I don't care about that. I just want to play a 4-mana four 4-7. Four if I can silence it, whatever. If I can combo it with like Akanai Soul Priest so that it does 5 damage instead of healing 5. Yeah, that's cool. But I'm just going to play this in all my Priest decks because it's a 4-mana four 4-7. Four Even if you're playing like a Resurrection deck or something, you're not upset to get a 4-mana four 4-7. Four card just seems very good. And hey, it's got 7 health, so 6 star liner synergy. Maybe that's a thing or something. Next up we have the Evil Conscriptor, which uh, I think actually is sort of comparable to the Hinch Clan Shade Quill, in that it's just a very good, very efficient card. But unlike the Shade Quill, I don't really know where I'm supposed to play this card. Priest is losing most of its death rattle synergy with uh, Quest and Twilight's Call both rotating. There is still some other stuff. You can draw this off Dead Ringer, which could be okay. But like the other death rattle synergy, uh, Reckless Experimenter, Coffin Crasher, those don't really synergize with this guy very well. So other than Dead Ringer, like I don't know what I want to do with this card. If, say, Spiteful Priest was still around, I'd be pretty excited to play this in Spiteful Priest in any metagame where Keliseth wasn't around. But it's, uh, I just don't know where I want to play this. Like, I don't want to play this in my Resurrect deck because I don't want to get a 2-2 back. I'm not super interested in playing this in some just generic Control Priest deck because I don't think Control Priest really uses the Lackey that well. I don't think Silence Priest uses the Lackey that well because, like, what are you going to do? Give Rush to your Ancient Watcher that can't attack anyway? Are you going to use the Evolve guy on your Arcane Watcher that's already bigger than any 4-drop? I just think most Priest decks don't use this card that well. It reminds me a lot of Shadow Ascendant, 
which would probably be played in like maybe all eight other classes. But as a priest card, I don't I just don't see a home for this card. It just doesn't seem that good to me. Or it does seem that good to me, but I just don't see a home for it. Next up we have Convincing Infiltrator. Seems like Priest is on a pretty good run of getting cards that are just pretty good. And I think this is closer to the Shade Quill than the Conscriptor. I do think you can just play this card in most Priest decks. Uh, you compare it to like Spider Bomb or Obsidian Statue with the Death Rattle, and both of those saw play. It's, uh, it's not as good of a Resurrect target as Obsidian Statue, obviously. But I think it's still a pretty good Resurrect target. Uh, it's still a 2-6 taunt, stop some aggro, kill a sea giant or something, pretty sick. Or you just play it against control and kill their whatever random 7-drop they have in play or something like that. Just seems like a very good, very efficient card. Um, I think I want to play this in my Resurrect Priest decks, my Generic Control Priest decks. Any Priest deck that's not upset to have a, a decent 5-mana minion in it I think is probably going to play this card. Next up we have Mass Resurrection, which it's easy to compare this to Diamond Spellstone and say that this card is looking pretty sketchy. But like every other Spellstone that saw play, Diamond Spellstone was horrendously broken. So there's room for a card to be less broken than that and still be good. Um, I think maybe the bigger issue is just how much the Resurrection Priest archetype loses. Um, Shadow Visions, Psychic Scream... Eternal Servitude, Shadow Essence. It loses some of its best Resurrect targets with Obsidian Statue and Lich King. But maybe more relevant than any of that is losing Radiant Elemental. Because without Radiant Elemental and with this card being 9 mana, um, I don't think it's really an OTK deck anymore. You can't just revive a bunch of stuff and then cast Double Mind Blast, Double Holy Smite or whatever. And compared to Spellstone, this does not necessarily summon unique minions. So if three of your minions got hexed in a game, you can revive three frogs. Or you can revive like a frog and two Northshire clerics or something, which uh, can be pretty bad. But duplicates can be a good thing. You can get three copies of Malagos and then still cast Holy Smite for 17 damage. Uh, this card would have been super sick with Charge Double Soar, but unfortunately that rotates out. I wanted nine mana for Charge 21 damage. But even without that, and without the Radiant Elemental OTKs, there are still pretty good targets for this. Um, you can still pull, like, the big taunt minions, the Grizzlies or Stegatrons or Moshog Enforcer, maybe Grave Horror makes its way into this deck. Uh, there's good value stuff with Ysera. I'm pretty much happy any time a Zilliax hits my board, regardless of how much mana I have to spend for it. And I think the Resurrection Archetype got some pretty good support in this set. We've seen the Shade Quill and the Convincing Infiltrator, which, while they're not like insane resurrect targets, are very respectable resurrect targets. And the second legendary we'll look at in a minute, Katrina Muerte, is just insane for the, uh, the resurrection archetype. So even though this card is like half as good as Diamond Spellstone, it might actually just still be the way to play Priest, just resurrect big idiots. Next up we have Forbidden Words. I'm gonna give this thing five stars because I think you play it in every single priest deck, unless they print another Spiteful Summoner or something. But yeah, I think this card is just good. I mean, you compare it to Shadow Word Pain. It's just a cheaper Shadow Word Pain if you kill a minion with zero or one attack. It's the same as Shadow Word Pain if you kill a minion with two attack. And it's better than Shadow Word Pain against anything with 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10 attack, because you can actually cast it on those minions. So it's just better than, or equal to, Shadow Word Pain in every case, except where the minion has 3 attack. And even then, it only costs 1 more mana. It's not like the end of the world. Obviously, you're not that excited if you have to pay 8 mana to kill a Mountain Giant, but it's nice to have the flexibility to spend 8 mana to kill the Mountain Giant. And if there's any deck that can afford to just spend 8 mana like that, it's Control Priest. And if there's something that Control Priest is very excited about, it's Shadow Word 4, being able to kill Twilight Drake, which is something that the deck could never do before. Just straight up did not have an answer to Chill Wind Yeti, and Forbidden Words is your Chill Wind Yeti answer now. 
Um, I've seen some comparisons to Forbidden Flame, which was the mage forbidden card back in, this was Whispers of the Old Gods, I think. And it just straight up dealt damage to a minion equal to your mana expenditure. But if you look at a card like Ysera, I mean, Forbidden Words costs 4 mana to kill Ysera, and Forbidden Flame costs 10 mana and doesn't kill Ysera. So, and I think in general, like, the big idiots you want to be killing probably have more health than attack. So, Forbidden Words just seems like a very good card. You probably start every priest deck by putting two of these in, and I think it's just going to be very powerful for the next two years. Next up we have Lazul's Scheme, another powerful zero mana spell for Priest in this expansion. Um, it has some excellent synergy with Forbidden Words. If this thing is sat in your hand long enough, you can spend two cards, which is pretty expensive, but two cards and zero mana to kill a Deathwing or whatever. Um, it similarly combos with Topsy Turvy. If you get something down to zero attack and then flip it, it just dies. Um, it has some other obvious synergy with Cabal Shadow Priest. You just let this sit in your hand for two turns, and then you can steal their Ysera. Very insane value play for any sort of control priest deck. Um, you can also just use this to value trade with your Hinch Clan Shade Quill or whatever. You can use this to work out some Mass Hysteria math. That's pretty high level, but uh, definitely applicable. If you if your opponent has like a five five and a six six, you make their five, five or you make the six six a four six. So then they actually kill each other instead of the opponent being left with a 6-1. Um, it's a 0 mana spell, so it has applications with Wild Pyromancer. It can let you steal stuff with Shadow Madness if somehow Divine Spirit stuff is still playable. And even if you don't land a synergy, you can just use this to not take 8 damage from a Mountain Giant for the turn. So, seems just like a very solid card. Lots of stuff it can do. It's sort of... On its own, low impact, it needs to be comboed most of the time. But that's what Priest is good at, right? Playing cards that individually aren't great, but they combo them with other stuff to be really powerful. So I think this card seems pretty good. Next up we have Shadowy Figure. Uh, this is probably the worst card that Priest got in this expansion, I think. Priest is losing most of its Death Rattle synergy. It's losing the quest and Twilight's Call. And uh, even if it still had the Death Rattle synergy, like we've seen Mirage Caller, we've seen Vivid Nightmare, and those cards were, like they saw some amount of play, but they were not insane cards by any stretch. And this card is way more situational, and probably just way less powerful than those. And as I said, this is way more situational, but it's not just like, it's slightly more situational, it's more situational to the point where I'm like, what do I even want to copy with this? Like, I don't want a 2-mana 2-2 two, two Hinge Clan Shade Quill. It's pretty good with uh, Convincing Infiltrator, I guess. But that's kind of a slow play. You can't do that until turn 6 or 7. But, like, beyond that, what are you copying? A Loot Hoarder or a Dead Ringer or something? I just don't see what you're supposed to do with this card. Just straight up. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. Doesn't seem like a great card to me. So, next up we have Madame Lazul. Sticking with the trend of just a good card, that seems to be the theme of Priest cards of this expansion. It does have poor synergy with the Resurrect mechanic, but outside of that I think you're going to play a copy of this in pretty much all of your Priest decks. It's just very efficient, 3 mana 3 2 draw a card, and I actually think the text on this, discover a copy of a card from your opponent's hand, is probably just better than draw a card, which usually just like discover a random thing is not better than draw a card. But this one, it gives you info on what your opponent's actually holding, which is sometimes relevant. I mean, we saw with Camellius that that's not, like, the most insane effect in the world. But it's just, like, free information on the opponent. And even if your opponent's deck and your deck don't necessarily have the same game plan, you're still getting to discover from three playable cards. So, like, even if you're up against Control Warrior, and one of the options is Shield Slam, obviously you can't use Shield Slam, but there's still two other cards. You can steal their uh, Dr. Boom, Mad Genius, or you can steal an Omega Devastator, or an Execute, or something like that. So with the Discover effect on this, compared to drawing a card, drawing a card you get one of one constructed playable cards, but this you get your choice of one of three constructed playable cards. 
So it just seems very good to me. I think any priest deck that's not resurrecting minions is probably going to play Madame Lazul without much thought. Very solid card. And finally we have Katrina Muerte. 8 mana 6, 8, summon a thing at the end of the turn, so pretty similar to Kel'Thuzad. Has some upside and downside compared to Kel'Thuzad. But I think the card is just very powerful, and it could be like the reason that you want to play big idiots in your deck and mass resurrection. It's just a very, very powerful card. Say you pull back like a, uh, a Witchwood Grizzly. You get an 8 mana 6 8 that's a continuous threat. And you get a 312 taunt. It's just crazy. Resurrecting minions and priests. I mean, we've seen it with Servitude, Spellstone. It's just a powerful mechanic. Something you can do with this card that's actually pretty impressive is just chain Katrina into Katrina. Um, so you like play this and it dies or whatever, and then you mass resurrection, and at the end of the turn it happens to hit a Katrina, then you have two continuous threats, your opponent has to deal with it, or like at the end of your next turn they each summon another Katrina, and then you just have like infinite Katrinas if they don't have the equality or whatever. Or you can also just like, this is eight mana, so you cast Seance on it, the turn you play it, it dies, and then next turn you play another Katrina, summons the first Katrina. It's just really sick. I think any mass resurrection deck is going to play this card, and it might even just be a good enough generic card to just throw in Control Priest. Like, yeah, sometimes you're going to hit Northshire Cleric, but sometimes you're going to hit Hench Clan Shade Quill or Convincing Infiltrator, and that's just pretty sick. I think there's very good potential for this card to see a lot of play. So looking back on the Priest cards, I think Priest probably got the best set of cards as far as just like average power level goes. Um, I think I rated three cards poorly, and one of them is very good in the deck that it goes in. I just don't expect the deck to be that good. And I guess also Evil Conscriptor, if there is some sort of tempo aggro priest deck, it's very good in that deck. So like nine of the cards Priest got are very playable, and seven of them I'm expecting to actually see play. So that's very good. As far as Priest decks to look out for, um, I think there's going to be a Resurrect Priest, probably some sort of generic Control Priest that may or may not play Katrina as a bit of a Resurrect thing. But beyond that, I think it looks kind of sketchy. I think maybe the next best candidate is Silence Priest, but I don't, I don't have much faith in Silence Priest myself, but it could be a thing. 